There are a great many things that we can do as mini painters to make our miniatures stand out from a lot of the other stuff that we see on the internet, on social media, that kind of thing. So I wanted to take some time to go over a few ideas for things that I like to do to make my stuff stand out. Now some of these are going to be pretty obvious, others maybe you won't have thought of. So let's get into a few things that I do to try and make my miniatures stand out. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one because it's just so obvious, but I don't want you to think for a second that just painting your best or painting really well or being a great painter are the only ways that your miniatures can get noticed. Painting your best will of course always help your work stand out. Of course the work that you're proud of is going to be the most likely to capture other people's attention. But in this modern era with lots and lots of emphasis on social media, people are kind of becoming a bit desensitized to all but the most epic competition level paint jobs. And so that's why I kind of wanted to open up with this one to explain that whilst it's important, it's really not the be all and end all. And to be honest, that's exactly where these other tips are going to come in handy. Because even if you're not a competition painter or not someone who has acres and acres of time to pump into painting their miniatures, these are things that most of us can apply and will definitely help. Okay, this is easily one of my favourite ones because, to be honest, everyone can do it. It applies at all levels of painting. Let's take a look at this Lelith, for example, from the Piety and Pain box set. The dark skin and white armour look nothing like how you'd expect to see this character based on the lore, based on the painted examples from Games Workshop, for example. And so she really stands out. You pay attention to her and you want to study the miniature. Similarly, with these Dawn Eagle jet bikes that I'm working on, the white armour and the bright red Aquila are so far removed from the examples that we're used to seeing in the box art with the all gold heavily shiny look that you just can't help but pay attention to them. It creates a point of visual interest. And this could even work in ways that you wouldn't expect, like for example on this runt herd from my orc army. The warm green tones used in his skin that highlighted up through yellows versus the turquoisey cold green tones of the squig itself make the squig really stand out even though it's green on green. So whilst paying homage to your favourite box art is definitely a really cool and fun thing to do and is absolutely something I'd encourage, it can equally be a ton of fun just to play around, explore and come up with some wild and wacky colour combinations. Okay, I've spoken about this on the channel a number of times now because it's kind of a central tenet of my painting style. There are a few videos previously where I've gone into ideas for using in obvious colours for shading and highlighting. But I want to give it a bit of separate space because unlike the previous example, it is something that requires you to maybe know a bit of colour theory to do well. Picking unexpected shadow colours can be a fantastic way to pull the viewer in and make them look more at your miniature. For example, look at the green skin here that's shaded with pink, or the blue, yes, blue, that I've shaded the tan coloured pants with. These are examples of picking complementary colours or colours that have different relationships on the colour wheel and using them as shadow colours. Similarly with highlighting, by just thinking outside the box a bit, you can do some pretty cool stuff. The armour on this palatine, for example, starts at black but then works up through a deep purple into a turquoise and then eventually up to a sort of bright white turquoise at the very tips. That's not how you'd normally highlight black, and so you pay attention to the armour. Adding visual effects to your paint schemes is usually pretty damn easy, and it tends to turn heads and make people want to look at your paint jobs. A great example of this is adding stains or blood spatter to clothing. This is usually just done with thin paint or ink, and it adds a ton of character, but it's really, really easy to do. And just take a look at this tank. Despite only taking a little bit over an hour to get painted, the amount of dirt and grime and weathering and the annealing patterns on the metal muzzles of the flamers just give you so much interesting stuff to look at. And it's a really simple paint job. Okay, I don't want you to think that this is a cop-out because this last one is kind of a combination of everything that we've talked about, but also includes that idea of just having a good plan, knowing what you want to do and how you plan to execute it. Visual storytelling is a really great way that we can use different combinations of techniques and effects to create a predetermined narrative with our paint job. For example, let's take a look at this Gene Stealer Colts buggy. 
I wanted a really sandblasted, dirty, grimy, Mad Max kind of vibe to it, the post-apocalypse sort of feel. And so I used tons of weathering powders, chipping, stuck mostly to dull, normal colours on my palette, that kind of thing. And I think it's pretty successful in telling that story. It looks really dirty and grimy and poorly maintained. Whereas with Marnius Calgar here, I was trying to celebrate the release of the Calgar comic, and so I went for visual cues that were inspired by that. I've really oversaturated the blues and the skin tones. I've kept the, the colour palette itself very simple. There's no fuss. And those things are kind of reminiscent of the style of the comic books, and so I think it helps to communicate that. Telling a story is just a super fun way to bring together all of the different skills and techniques you've learned and test yourself, see how good you are at applying them, see how good you are at picking out the right ones for the right jobs. But it's also a really fun thought exercise, and just the planning stages of actually creating a miniature that you want to tell a story with can be one of the most rewarding parts of doing it. So those are my favourite ways that I like to try and make my miniatures stand out. So what are your favourite ways to make your miniatures stand out? Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you think I've missed that's a really great idea for helping to capture people's imagination when they look at photos of your minis. And as always, I'll be doing my best to reply to everyone who comments where I can. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And you can subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing here on the YouTubes. If you really like the content and you want to support its creation, there is also a Patreon campaign that you can pledge to, as well as all my social media links down in the description. So with all that said, it's time for me to get out of here, but thank you so much for watching this one, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.